Let's bring in Ken Christensen, aviation analyst and president of Integrated Aviation Solutions. Also with us, Seth Kaplan, managing partner of Aviation Weekly. Uh, the mystery continues, Seth. They, they think they know where this plane went down, but nobody has any idea yet why, and it could be a long, long time before we find the black boxes, and even then we might not know. A very long time, John. You know, for perspective, five years ago, Air France Flight 447 crashed off Brazil. We knew more or less where it went down. We saw debris that was certainly associated with that uh, plane crash just a few days later, along with, unfortunately, some bodies from it. And yet it took nearly two years to find that wreckage at the bottom of the ocean right below that. Here, we're still looking, fortunately now, not at something the size of the United States in terms of a search site, but at least, uh, let's say, the state of Texas. Uh, it, it's just daunting. And worst of all, John, as you mentioned, let's say we somehow find that needle in the haystack after first finding the haystack. The cockpit voice recorder, if we find it, would only have the last two hours of the flight, which would be after the incident began. If, in fact, there was one person acting alone in the cockpit, we literally might not hear a word on that cockpit voice recorder. So daunting, all of it. Yeah, Ken, uh, what about the, the way this has been handled by Malaysia? I mean, it just seems like there's been so much misinformation. And then finally, when they conclude uh, that the flight is in the water, that there are no survivors, they send out a text message. What about that? <laughs> text message, really? I. I could not believe that when I saw that. Um, clearly, the prime minister is not uh, going uh, to, uh, by the normal protocol for uh, missing aircraft or uh, aircraft that have been in, in an incident. Um, this is a well-rehearsed protocol. Of all the airlines know what to do, and I don't know who's advising the prime minister, but um, that was handled horribly. Uh, Seth, a, a guy that I know who is a, a pilot, a commercial mile, a pilot, longtime freight flyer, a mechanic, just kind of an aviation genius all the way around, says everything that he sees uh, is consistent with some kind of a, a very fast burning fire on board in the belly of the airplane that may have taken out the wires to the transponder, maybe even before the pilots knew they had a problem that they then turned around tried to head back, tried to find a place to land, and were overcome by smoke before anything of the kind, uh, before they could make it back to safety. Does that fit the scenario the way you see it? You know, John, you really have to thread a needle with a very small eye to get to the conclusion that this plane would have continued flying for so many hours in a situation like that. Now, certainly there's precedent. We've heard lately about the Payne Stewart crash, for example, where you had a, an aircraft traveling another four hours after everybody lost consciousness. But in this case, there's quite a bit of evidence that somebody was at least in some control of the plane. So why they would have continued flying so many hours in, instead of trying to get it on the ground somewhere, the, the preponderance of the evidence, although certainly nothing conclusive, is that somebody tried to cut off communication and, and somebody was in some control of this aircraft. Certainly impossible to rule anything out. You can make the case for a lot of scenarios right now because we're missing so much information, but yeah. more likely that somebody commandeered this aircraft, perhaps, for example, one of the two pilots. Uh, some incidents over the years, fortunately not too many, but where you yeah. had one pilot lock another out of the cockpit and then crash a plane. Ken, uh, we just have a few seconds left, but how confident are you that eventually they'll be able to find this plane in the black boxes? Uh, John, I am confident that uh, they will, um, how they um, uh, map the bottom of the ocean with the um, Air France crash, they're going to, that's going to be a very similar parallel. Uh, now, it will be a larger area because of the debris field has been floating for so long, mm. but uh, the Navy has put uh, marker buoys in, in the water to see where the drifts are, and I am it will, it's going to take a while, but I am confident that they will uh, solve this mystery. But they, they had a pretty good idea where Air France went down, and it still took two years. Gentlemen, we have to leave it there. Ken Christensen, Seth Kaplan, thank you both.